can you solve this geometry challenge? Here's the question. Given this square, let's draw a segment like this. And this angle measures alpha. And this segment measures one unit. And this segment, the other segment, is two units. Now from here, let's connect this vertex to this intersection like this. And let's call this angle be equal to alpha. Now, let's call the length of this segment be equal to x. And the question, what is the length of this segment, x? Pause this video right now and see if you can answer this question. Because I will show you the solution and the technique to answer this kind of question in 3, 2, 1. Given this figure, the goal is to find the value of x. Now, first, to answer this question is, of course, let s be the side length of the square. Why not? So, all of the side of the square be equal to s. And since this is also equal to s, if this is 1, then this segment right over here be equal to s minus 1. Similarly, if this segment is 2, and the whole segment is s, so this segment right over here must be equal to s minus 2. Now, from here, this angle is alpha. So why not? Let's call this angle be equal to beta and this angle be equal to gamma. Now, let's focus on this right triangle. Now, on this right triangle, we have opposite side and the adjacent side. Therefore, we can get the tangent of beta. So tangent of beta simply equal to s minus 2 over s or the opposite side over its adjacent side. Now, on this right triangle, however, if we get tangent of gamma, tangent of gamma simply equal to the opposite side, S minus 1, over the adjacent side, S. Now, what we know about this given information, we know that alpha plus beta plus gamma simply equal to 90 degrees because this is the corner of our square. And if we subtract alpha on both sides, Beta plus gamma simply equal to 90 degrees minus alpha. Now, we know tangent of beta and tangent of gamma. So why not? Let's take tangent of both sides. And there you have it. Now, we have here tangent of 90 degrees minus alpha. And we know this is exactly equivalent to cotangent of alpha. Because this is complementary of tangent. And... Complementary of tangent simply saying cotangent. So we have cotangent of alpha. So tangent of 90 degrees minus alpha simply equivalent to tangent of alpha. So let's replace tangent with cotangent. Now using this information, we can now solve for the value of s. Because if we get the value of s or the side of the square, we can now find the value of the segment x. So let's do that. So let's apply the identity tangent of beta plus gamma. So this is equivalent to tangent of beta plus tangent of gamma all over 1 minus tangent of beta times tangent of gamma. And we know the values of tangent of beta and tangent of gamma. Here are those values. So we can equate them. And now the question is what is the value of cotangent of alpha? So here comes this small right triangle comes into play. So we know this is alpha, this is the opposite side, and this is the adjacent side. Tangent of alpha is 1 over 2. And cotangent of alpha is its reciprocal, so 2 over 1, or simply equal to 2. So we know cotangent of alpha simply equal to 2. And now, using this equation, we can now solve for the value of s. So let's focus on this equation. Now first, let's simplify first the numerator and multiply these two. So we have 2s minus 3 over s and the product of s minus 2 over s times s minus 1 over s is s squared minus 3s plus 2 all over s squared. Now this one right over here, we can rewrite this as s squared over s squared. So we can combine them. So the numerator becomes cancel out s squared. So we have 3s minus 2 over s squared. Now let's focus on this result. What we're going to do here is to multiply the left-hand side by s squared over s squared. So this becomes 2s squared minus 3s all over 3s minus 2. 
Now, let's cross multiply. So, the right hand side becomes 6s minus 4. And combining like terms and equate this to 0, we have 2s squared minus 9s plus 4. Now, this quadratic equation in terms of s is not hard to factor because if we factor this out, we get 2s minus 1 multiplied by s minus 4. And let's focus on this factored form to solve for the value of s. Now, using the zero property, we can say that 2s minus 1 equals 0 or s minus 4 equals 0. In the first equation, we get s as 1 over 2. In the second equation, we get s equals 4. So we found two possible values for s. We have 1 over 2 and 4. Now, from here, is s equals 1 over 2 be a valid solution? And the answer is no, because s minus 1 should be a positive number. If s is 1 over 2, 1 over 2 minus 1 is negative 1 over 2. So we cannot have s equals 1 over 2. This is too small for s. So s is equal to 4. Now we know the side of this square is simply equal to 4. And using this right triangle, we know s is 4. s minus 1 or 4 minus 1 is 3. Now from here, we can now find the value of this variable x using the Pythagorean theorem. So we have x squared equals 3 squared plus 4 squared. 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 9 plus 16 is 25, get the square root on both sides, we get the positive value of x, and x simply equal to 5. And that is our answer to this question. Therefore, given this figure, then the value of x, this segment x, simply equal to 5 units. And as always, we are done.